Thanks for stopping on our channel, which is dedicated to central heating. And as you can see, I've been doing this a long time. Whether you install or you have heating, hopefully my videos will make a difference. But please leave me a comment in the section below. Lights, action, camera, let's begin. The Honeywell Y-Plan is possibly the most popular installed since, I don't know, the 1970s when I used to put them in as a standard uh, right up to date. But things have moved on and we no longer really install Y-Plans. We move over more to S-Plans because that's a three bedroom semi or larger. But first of all, if I can ask you to down on the corner subscribe to our channel and that will be terrific for us because there's lots of other videos associated with this. Also can I thank the reps and the factories from Honeywell, Drayton and Danfoss for their support in making this video and giving me that extra knowledge. If you're a customer and you're looking to install controls whether they're smart controls from Hive or Nest or from the boiler manufacturers, always make sure that the person you are asking to do this job has been to a recognised course. And here's my certificates from Danfoss Drayton, and the one on the bottom is the one that we give all the installers here on the Thursday, because they have to not only do the manufacturer's course, but they also learn about the smart controls from those other companies, and they will reach a very high standard. Because the problem is, this Honeywell Y-Plan system has the most faults done by installers. So this video is going to be part one, how to install it and a few bits and pieces of information. And the next video is going to be all of the faults and all of the rip-offs that installers do to cheat their customers out of a correctly installed system and making the bills much higher than they should be. So let's begin. Let's have a look at the main components. So first of all, as with any system, we need time and temperature control. That's compulsory. So here we have a two channel programmer, a room thermostat for the heating and a cylinder thermostat for the hot water. And here's our diverter valve or mid position valve, because there are two. The old one, which is called the diverter valve, we no longer install because it has a major problem for us. And that is when it's replenishing the hot water, the cylinder stat is calling to do that job and the boiler fires up. But the problem here is that it shuts off the heating port. And whilst that's in hot water mode, your house cools down. And the further away the boiler is to the cylinder, the more expensive your fuel bill is going to be, which is not acceptable in this day and age. So all of the manufacturers make a valve called mid position. Now, instead of closing off the radiators, it goes in the middle. So the cylinder has been replenished, but the heating still continues, albeit at a lesser extent, but at least it doesn't cool down the house. So that's an important step forward to make sure that if you are installing this, it's a mid position system that you buy. When we look at the box, this is the latest version. The old one used to be all red and great big writings on, so we don't use those anymore. This is the one and it's 22 mil. So I'll do some close ups as, as always. And inside that you'll get the latest valve and the wires, which I'll go through shortly, and it tells you everything you need to know. And remember, it must be earth because it's metal. And also inside, you'll get a leaflet, as always, positioning and the, the way it's wired up to a junction box. Now, as professionals, we don't use junction boxes, we use wiring centers. And this is the Honeywell wiring center for S plans and Y plans and a couple of others, but we're interested in Y plan in this video. 
The good thing about this is basically it's easy to use. The bad side is 20 pounds and installers won't waste that sort of money. They will buy this one here, which is much harder for an amateur to do, but it's only 10 pounds. So they try and skimp and make a mess because if you don't know what you're doing, you've not been on a course, you will mistakes. You will make mistakes. Sorry about that, you will make mistakes, which is why we always recommend a wiring center. Danfoss has one, Drayton has one, Honeywell has one. But for some reason, Honeywell seems to have a bunch of installers that will say, I'm not gonna spend 20 quid and do it easily and professionally. I'm gonna spend 10 quid and make a mess. And on the next video, as I said, I'll show you all the problems that are associated with that and the ripoffs as well. So these are the main components, time, temperature, valve. So the next stage we're gonna move over is on our books. So we'll have a closer look at those. Both of our books are available from our website, mrcombi.com or from Amazon. And we'll, let's look at the yellow book first because this is uh, our latest version. And what we've got here, I've put the flow charts that I've got from the manufacturers. So big thank you to all those people in technical from all the firms and supplied us with these drawings to make life easier. And if you've got water, no heating or heating, no water, whatever. This will be in these first few pages. There's more to follow as well. So this is a very simple guide and available in this book. Also, we've got even more technical uh, information from the departments and drawings, etc. how to test components. Our wiring book, which has become extremely successful, and uh, which we thank. The drawings, as you can see, they're in color. We've got lots of different um, scenarios. We've got the different systems, the C plan, S plan, wiring center that we talked about earlier, and then all the different charts from the manufacturers, Danfoss and Honeywell. So we can go into smart drawings. And um, if we look at this one here, uh, lovely colored wires that you can flow through the sequence because there is a very strict sequence of wiring and fault finding and if you know that sequence which obviously we teach on a thursday you'll find the fault very quickly and then solve the problems if you don't understand the sequence of wiring or fault finding you can spend hours and hours here or even on the phone so the book is there for you and as i said it's available either from our website or from um, uh, Amazon and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because there's more bits and pieces of information to complement this particular video. The first test that we're going to have to do is our four-part electrical test make sure it's safely isolated and we're going to use two instruments we're going to use our proving kit to make sure that it's off and dead and also, I'll show you how to use a multimeter to do the same job. So first of all, we've got the spur that's left by the electrician. It will have a 13 amp fuse, so we have to change it to a red three amps. And that is crucial because if it isn't three amps, not only can you blow this apart, but also the PCB inside the boiler, which is not gonna be quite helpful. So we've already checked this because obviously we do that here anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to put this to an earth, earth continuity. So we'll put this to the screw, and we'll put this down to here, and there's no light showing, so therefore that should be dead. But it shows that the earth is continuing without voltage. Now, if we use our multimeter, we'll put it into ohms. We'll do our two second test, 21, 22 and it's moved, so therefore that's fine. And we do exactly the same again, put it on the screw, put it on the body of the motorized valve, and you can see there it's gone down to zeros and in two seconds. But we also do up here as well, we go from that screw to this earth, and it does exactly the same thing. You can see it's gone down to zeros instead of open line. And then if we do our other short circuit test that we do, which is resistance to earth, is a, is a 
proper one, I'm getting tangled up here. So we'll, we'll go back to the screw and then we'll go to the live terminal. And you can see here it's OL, which it has to be. And we put it into the neutral and it's OL again, and it has to be. And then we put it just back to the earth and we can see it's moved. So therefore, our four part electrical test is a pass. Now the next stage to this is going to be to switch the power on, but no demand. So the way we do that is simply we remove this end and I've pre-wired this because it's a normal rig that we use. And then we're going to check the voltages, what's going on from this earth. We can also use neutral or we can use the top. So all, all of them will go. So we'll just switch it on. We'll use our tester. So we'll put this, because we know this is earth already, and we'll put this into our live terminal here. And you can just about see that the light's on. But if I go here on this live, you can see again, see, it's showing on there, on neutral, zero, and that's enough to do this test. So we know that the polarity is perfect. And this is important, but we're gonna do this with our multimeter because I like figures. Lights are fine, and that's a good safe way, and I'm 100% for that type of system. But I like to see numbers on my display to see how many or what there are. So we'll put this over to this side, AC. We've done the test on the uh, probes. So now what we're going to do is, you can see on the close-ups, can't cross hands. So I'm going to put this to earth, switch it on, and then in the connector block here, it's going to pop up and give us 243 volts AC are coming in. We'll put it onto the neutral next door, zero. And obviously on the earth side, again, it'll be zero. So that means I've got 230 volts on the brown, nothing on the blue, and obviously nothing on the earth. And then I'm going to repeat the process up here on the programmer. So I'm going to go earth to live, which means 230 volts or more. On the neutral is zero. And there's no earth necessary on this particular one. Now, this is an important step because if we have any voltage between earth and neutral, this motor will only go halfway. Your pump will not reach maximum speed because the neutral is the return path of the brown live. And installers are mistakenly told that you can have five volts on the blue, and that's fine. Or if you have 10 volts, that's fine. That's actually completely wrong. You mustn't have any volts on the blue. That's a common fault by electricians where they join up the blue wire and use it to carry 230 volts or whatever. Normally it's 230 volts and that's not allowed. But because they do it so often, the heating industries have to fall in with them. But when we do these controls, and as I said, this valve will open halfway, and that, I'll do that fault tomorrow. But now you know, there has to be no volts between neutral blue and the earth wire. So we've got earth here, earth on the screw. Or if you're near a gas pipe, you can use it there as well. So that covers the basic things. Now I know that the system can be wired up safely and we proceed.